Dave takes advantage of broke people's financial fears and he markets that to sell his program. I know this video is going to irritate some people because there are a lot of people out there who really love Dave Ramsey and some of his advice is very helpful. I followed him in my early 20s and he did teach me some very valuable things, but a lot of his advice that he gives is harmful, especially to certain groups of people, particularly people that are low income or have other disparities. Take what you want from this video, but these are things that I wish I would have known when I first started following Dave Ramsey. So I'm gonna share with you six things that Dave teaches that I think are extremely harmful. Number one, baby step one, the $1,000 emergency fund. $1,000 is not enough money to have in an emergency fund. $1,000 doesn't cover hardly anything. For most people, that doesn't even cover their rent. What is gonna happen if somebody loses their job or gets sick or a family member gets sick or their car breaks down or just tons of other things that could happen and they only have $1,000 saved? That family might not be able to pay their rent. They will barely be able to buy food pay their electricity, $1,000 is just not enough of a base amount of savings to have. Before you start paying off your debt, you need to have at a very bare minimum one month of expenses, but more like three months of expenses. So by telling people that they should only have $1,000 in savings while they're paying off their debts is incredibly irresponsible and can really put people in a very bad situation. The second thing that Dave insists is that you do not have credit cards. The issue is not the credit cards themselves. The issue is not paying off the credit cards every month and paying for interest on those credit cards. Dave is assuming that people are stupid and irresponsible and are not able to pay off their credit cards every month. What he should be teaching or what should be taught instead is credit cards are okay and beneficial as long as you pay them off every month. If you can't pay them off every month, then you shouldn't be using them, but learning how to pay them off and not paying interest is perfectly acceptable and what people actually need to do. A lot of times credit cards are required to do certain things I know that I rent cars often and you cannot rent a car without a credit card at a lot of places. And the places that do allow you to rent a car without a credit card require you to put a $500 deposit down and they do a credit check, which we'll talk about your credit check in a minute. But if you follow Dave's advice, you can literally never rent a car. Back to Dave's first bit of advice, which was that $1,000 in your emergency fund while you're paying off your debt snowball. If you only have $1,000 and you have a emergency and that $1,000 doesn't cover your emergency, having a credit card can be the thing that pays your electricity, feeds your family. So having that secondary backup plan if your $1,000 doesn't cover your emergency can be extremely helpful. Credit cards also have really good rewards. You can take advantage of these credit card rewards and make them work for you as long as you're paying off your credit card every month. Credit cards are also a good way to build up your credit score. So if you have a credit card and you make your payments every month, that will build your credit score and you're earning rewards on money that you're already spending and you have a way to rent a car and you have that there in case there is an emergency. Number three is not having a credit score. Not having a credit score is extremely dangerous unless you are a multimillionaire who can pay cash for everything, including a house. Credit scores, as sucky as it may be, are very important to do so many adult things. 
when you're ready to buy your house, your credit score is going to impact what kind of loan you are gonna be able to get on that house. And if you have a bad credit score, you might not be able to get a loan or you might have a really high interest rate. Same thing if you need to get a loan on a car, which I know is obviously better not to get a loan on a car, but some people, especially people with a lower income, are going to have to get a loan on a car. Getting a loan on a car is not the end of the world because you need transportation. And if you can't pay cash for a car, you gotta get a car loan. Having a good credit score is going to enable you to get a better loan for the car and is gonna save you a lot of money. Your credit score doesn't just affect loans, but like other aspects of your life. A lot of places, if you're trying to rent, are gonna run a credit check. A lot of jobs are going to run a credit check. And even like if you are gonna get car insurance, they will run a credit check and base your rate off of what your credit score is. When I moved and needed to have my utilities turned on, they ran a credit check to see how much of a deposit I needed to put down to the utility companies. Credit scores are important and not having one is harmful. And it especially harms people who are poor already. Yeah, a credit score might not be important if you have tons of money and can put large deposits down on things or can pay cash for things, but for most people, that credit score is going to really affect you if you don't have a good one. So this is really probably one of the most harmful things that he teaches people is to not have a credit score. And if you wanna dive even deeper into it, he recommends his own loan underwriters. And by not having a credit score when you're ready to go buy a house, if you're following Dave's plan, you are almost required to use his loan underwriters to buy a house, therefore making him and his loan underwriters money off of your inability to buy a house with other lenders because you don't have a credit score. It's a smart business plan for him, but not so great for everybody else. So the next thing that I super disagree with him on is buying a house. He has all these super specific and pretty intense qualifications for when you would be like allowed to buy a house when you're following his program. And it's just not gonna work for most people, especially low income people. Buying a house is one of the best wealth building tools for people who don't make a lot of money. And by telling people that they can't buy a house until they meet all of these qualifications is keeping a lot of people from that wealth building tool. So everybody's gonna have to pay for housing. If you don't own a home, you're gonna have to pay for rent. And rent in a lot of places is way more expensive than paying for a mortgage, especially right now with interest rates being pretty low. So I'm gonna to read to you Dave's qualifications for buying a house, and then maybe you'll understand why these are not very attainable for most people. Okay, this is coming directly from his website. At Ramsey, we teach people they can't afford to buy a house unless they meet these qualifications are completely debt-free, have an emergency fund of three to six months of expenses, save a down payment of 10 to 20%, and can qualify for a 15-year fixed rate conventional mortgage. So I get the first two things are beneficial, being completely debt-free and having an emergency fund of three to six months of expenses. Being debt-free, especially if you're low income, is probably one of the only things that is gonna help you be able to qualify for a house because they do look at your debt to income ratio. So if you have a lot of debt and you have a low income, you're probably not gonna qualify for a house. So if you have a low income, being debt free is definitely helpful. Um, having an emergency fund of three to six months of expenses, I actually think everybody should do this, which is what I talked about before. But yeah, having three months of expenses in your emergency fund is important for everybody, no matter what. 
saved a down payment of 10 to 20 percent. That could take people years and years and years to do, years while they're still paying rent. So this is not something that I think is necessary, especially if you're gonna be buying a house as an investment opportunity, houses that build equity, and you wanna buy a house that in the future is going to be worth more than it is now. So I do not think that you need to have a down payment of 10 to 20%, especially if that's gonna take you years to save for can qualify for a 15 year fixed rate conventional mortgage. There is no reason to get a 15 year fixed rate conventional mortgage. I think everybody should get a 30 year mortgage. You can pay off it you can pay it off early if you want to, but that is your choice. Interest rates being 3 to 5% or sometimes even lower, but anywhere around there you're better off investing your money if you have extra money into other places that are building a higher interest rate. If you can only qualify for a 30 year loan, then do that. Do not let that keep you from buying a house. So real quick, here is what I did when I was in my early 20s. I bought a house. I was making a little over $20,000. I was a single mom. I bought a house for $79,000 over a 10 year period. I did some renovation work on it and just it just built equity. And I was able to sell the house for $240,000. So I made a whole lot of money. And that is the best way for somebody with a low income to be able to build wealth is through the house that they already have to live in because you have to pay for housing. Housing costs go up. Your home is going to build equity. Instead of throwing that money away into rent, you're throwing it into an investment and are going to build wealth. In the future, you can either own that home outright and not have a mortgage anymore, or you could sell the home and make a lot of money off of that house. So the next thing Dave talks about is gazelle intensity, which is basically work, 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 work all the time. This is just something that I cannot get behind because that is like no life at all. Working all the time, having second and third jobs is a garbage way to live. I want to spend time with my family. My kids are only young once. And I don't want to spend all of that time when they're young working and not getting to be with them. It seems like a better idea to me to wait until they're a little bit older and then work more once they're no longer with me. Your kids are only young once and you can never get that time back. You are also only young once and can never get that time back. Telling people to work so much is just wrong and is not what is best for people. I get that there's a long-term payoff, but what are you losing for that? Life is meant to be enjoyed and your time is so valuable and you are never going to get your time back. Dave seems to think that having and making money are the most important thing and I just can't get behind that. For me, I would like to have enough money so that I can spend my time the way that I want to spend it. And the last thing that really bothers me about what Dave talks about is the eating beans and rice mentality. That is to sacrifice everything now, including your health and your happiness, and eating healthy, getting enough sleep, getting enough exercise, relaxing, all of these things are vital to human well-being. And he promotes people to work, 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 and to not stop and relax and take care of themselves and not spend their time wisely. All of these things are more valuable than money will ever be. And you can have all the money in the world, but if you don't take care of your health, if you don't get enough sleep, if you are unhappy, 
all of that money is not gonna matter. And looking at it from a financial perspective, it's gonna cost you more money in the long run if you are not taking care of yourself in a healthy way. It's gonna cause health problems down the road, be it stress or eating unhealthy. You are at more risk of obesity and heart disease and stroke diabetes, all of these things that are preventable diseases. Listen, Dave's advice is good for some people. Some of his basic principles really make sense. Things like learning how to budget, not going into extreme debt, making sure you live below your means, making sure you have money in savings. All of those things are really important and he does a good job of teaching those things but so do a lot of other financial people and those are very basic concepts some of the other things he teaches though are not great financial advice i think that it is very dangerous when one person has so much power and is so black and white in their thinking and tells people that this is what you have to follow and you have to do these things in this order or you're wrong and stupid and that's what Dave does. And I think that that can be very dangerous and harmful to people who are trying to do the right thing, people who are scared financially, who are just struggling to survive. And he wants these people to follow his program and if you deviate from it at all, you are making a huge mistake and I just can't get on board with that because I know a lot of people who have deviated from his plan because they realized that what he's saying wasn't going to work for them personally and those people are doing great financially. It is important to get financial advice from many different people and not just one person. Do not just follow one person's advice, one person's plan without being able to think outside the box and get information from other people. So these are the reasons that I don't follow Dave Ramsey or I guess the main reasons I don't follow Dave Ramsey. But let me know below if you agree or disagree with me and if any of this resonated with you. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time.